Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a registration form using PHP. This is going to be part one of a new series where we look at how to create a super secure authentication system with PHP. This authentication will, will include logging in, verifying the user's email, resetting their password if they forget it, and deleting their account, along with today's episode, how to create an account. So let's get right into that. So first off, just to show you guys what I have running here, I'm using MAMP to create a local server, and then I also have MySQL as my database. And as you can see here, we have three tables, which I will go over as we get to them. But first, please note this users table, which contains basic information about our accounts. And we can actually go ahead and delete the entry we have in it right now, because we are going to be writing code that will do that for us. Now I have a lot of the HTML and CSS already done because this, that is not really the focus of this series. So as you can see, we have this register.php page that has a register form with all of the required fields. We have a name, email, password, and a confirm password field. In addition, we also have a register function that gets called whenever you click that button or press enter in any of the input fields. It's important to note that we also have this config.php file, which we're going to include in every single file. And that's because it's going to hold all of our constants as well as code that we want to run on every page, like setting the time zone, turning off error reporting, or setting the session cookie parameters. It's important to turn off error reporting because we don't want the user to see too much of our information about our code if possible. The information you want to pay attention to today is the database credentials, which I have set up so that we can connect to this database right here. So go ahead and fill this out with your own credentials in order to get this working. All right, so in addition, we also have this register.php file that is in our PHP folder, and that is going to be the script that we run when we press that register button. We also have our utils.php page, which is just going to have a bunch of helper functions. So let's take a look at our JavaScript. Here we have a request function and our register function. And we can go ahead and start writing a register function right after we write this request function, which is just going to send an AJAX request to our PHP script. So we'll start off by creating a new XML HTTP request object and then opening it for a POST request, sending that request to the URL specified by the parameter. And of course, we want it to be asynchronous. Next, we're going to add an event listener for the ready state change event. And this is just so we can tell when the request is finished. So when the ready state is equal to four, the request has finished, and we can check if callback is defined. And if it is, we will actually call that function, passing in the response from the request. Now, the last thing we want to do is actually send our data here. And I want the data to be formatted in a couple different ways, or you should be able to format it in a couple different ways. So the first way is you might have no data. And if we have no data, we want to just send undefined. Another way we could pass data is by using a form data element or passing in a query selector to a form element. So to handle that, we're just going to check if data is already an instance of form data. And if it is, we are going to just pass that right directly into the send function. Otherwise, we will create a new form data object. And right here, we just do document.querySelector, and we will pass in data, which is going to be our query selector. Now, the last thing I'm doing here is just adding some code so that a little loader pops up while you are running your request and waiting for it to come back. So now we can go to our register function and start calling our code. We're going to call php slash register.php. We're going to pass in the name of the form. And then we're going to have our callback function, which just takes in some data. So obviously, there's no visible differences yet, but we're just going to go ahead and open up that console for later and then hop on over to our PHP script. First thing we want to do is validate all of these fields that we have. It's important that you always validate your inputs on the server side because the user can easily get around any client side checks. It's OK to do both, but you definitely want to check on the server side. First thing we're going to do is see if name is set. We're also going to make sure that it is not too long. We want to keep everything under 255 characters. 
So if it's greater than 255, there'll be an error. And I'm doing that because all of our database variables are set as varchar255. So if that's greater than 255, we'll throw an error. And we also want to make sure that the user is only using valid characters. And to do this, we are going to use the preg match function in PHP and check if this function returns false. So here we're going to put in our regular expression for our name variable. And we want to limit the name to just letters, spaces, and hyphens. So to do that, we're going to start at the beginning of the character. We'll create a character set. And that character set will contain alphabetical letters, hyphens, and spaces. So then what we want to do is keep track of all of our errors that we come across. So to do that, we're going to create an array. And every time we have an error, we're going to add it to that array. And we're just using error codes here. So we'll start off where 1 is an error, and 0 is eventually going to be no error, but we'll get to that later. Next, we want to do the same thing for email. We check if it's set. If it's not set, there's, of course, an issue. We want to make sure the email is not too long, and we want to make sure that the email is actually a valid email. And to do that, we're going to use the filter var function, checking our email and making sure that we pass in filter validate email as the parameter. So if our email is invalid, we will just use error code 2 for that. Eventually, we will come back and do even more checks. But first, let's go ahead and check our password here, see if it's set. And then we also want to make sure that we enforce strong passwords. It's really important that the user uses incredibly strong passwords, because otherwise, all of your security is meaningless. So we're going to make sure that when we use this preg match function, we want to ensure that the user is using a strong password. And this is going to be error code 4. And now I'm just going to go ahead and paste in a regular expression right here. And what this is going to do is basically check if it is eight characters long or more. It's making sure that there's at least one lowercase letter, at least one capital, at least one number, and at least one of the symbols in this list right here. And I said we had one little extra check we can do. And that is actually checking the DNS records to make sure that the email that the user pass in is actually a valid domain with a mail server. And to do that, we're going to use the check DNS RR function in PHP. And so in here, we want to pass in the domain of their email. The second parameter is just going to be MX for email records. Now let's look at my email right here. We want to separate the gmail.com part. So the first thing we want to do is get the location of the at symbol. Once we do that, we know where we want to split the string. So we can use the substring function to take a substring of our email from that at symbol to the end of the string. So to do that, we're just going to move this string position into the substring function. And we also want to make sure we do plus one so that we don't include the at symbol in our domain. And now we can take this whole thing and we're going to get just the domain. So we can replace this domain variable with that code. It's important to note that we are also using an else if here because we only want to do the DNS check if they entered a valid email. So now we can check if our confirmed password field was set. And then we just want to see if the password and the confirmed password don't match we want to trigger an error as well. This is going to be error code 5. And with that, we have now validated all of our inputs. We can now go on to actually create the account. So if there were no errors, that means everything is validated. And we just want to make sure at the very end of this PHP script that we are echoing out all of the errors so that we can check them on the client side. So if there's no errors, we want to do a couple things. And the first thing we want to do is connect to the database. Then we want to make sure that the user that is trying to create an account does not already exist. So basically, each email needs to be unique. So we're checking if the email already exists in the database. Then after that, we can actually create the account. So let's start off with connecting to the database. We're actually going to make a function for this in utils.php. We're going to create a new MySQLi object. And this is where our database credentials come in. We're just going to paste all of these in. So first the host name, then the username, then the password, then the database name. Now if everything goes according to plan, this should connect. But we will also go ahead and do a little sanity check here to make sure there's no connection error. If there is, we'll just return false. Otherwise, we can just return the connection. 
Note, I did forget a semicolon here, but we'll come back to that later. Now we can call our connect function to connect to the database and just make sure everything connected fine. If not, of course, we will have a special error code for that, which we will add later. Okay, so the next step is to check if the user or if a user with the same email already exists. So to do that, we're going to create a new helper function that will basically be used for all of our future SQL select queries. So we're going to take in the connection, we're going to take in the query, the format, and all of the variables. We're going to set format to default to false, and that would be if you don't have any variables that you want to insert. And we also want variables to be variable length, basically. And what that means is you can put in any number of variables. So then we can create our statement with our query. If format is not false, then we can go ahead and actually bind the parameters to that query, passing in format and variables. Of course, we just want to expand that. Then we can actually execute our statement with an if statement to make sure we're checking if it actually worked. Otherwise, we'll return false. Then we can go ahead and get the result of our query and close the connection, which actually we want to close the connection down at the bottom of this function too, even if execute didn't work. Okay, so we've closed the statement, we have our result. We can now actually go ahead and use this function. We pass in our connection, and then we select ID from users where email is equal to the email that the user has entered. And this format variable is just a string, so we put S, and then we put in our post variable. So then the next thing we want to do is make sure our result is not false, and then also check if the number of rows is equal to zero. If that's true, that means that there is no user with the same email, and we can go ahead and actually create the account. Of course, otherwise, we'll send back the appropriate error code. Okay, so just like our SQL select function, we're also going to create an SQL insert function. To do that, we're just going to copy our SQL select function and change a couple things like the name, and then we also no longer want to get the result, but instead the insert ID. Basically, the insert ID is just the ID of the values that you just inserted, and so that can be very useful, so we'll just go ahead and return that ID. And then if everything failed, we'll return negative 1 because you can never have an ID of negative 1. It's important to note that you could pass any query you want for these functions, but we're just going to be using them for select and insert. So now we can go ahead and call that function, passing in our connection. Our query is going to be insert into users, and then our values are going to be, if you remember, we want to insert the ID, the name, email, password, and verified. So for ID, we're going to pass null, so it will do it for us. Then we got three question marks, and then we want our verified to be zero. And verified basically just means, has the user verified their email? And this is actually going to be a functionality we create in a different video, so stick around for that. Now we got three strings here. We got our name, we have our email, and finally our password. If you remember from my last video, it is never a good idea to store the password in plain text on the database. So you want to hash it. And in the last video, we used the SQL password function, but we're actually going to be using a more powerful function in PHP called password hash. This will use the bcrypt algorithm along with a salt to make sure that the password is super unique to each user and therefore immune from being cracked with rainbow tables. This means if an attacker has unlimited access to your database, even though they can see everyone's hash password, they have no way of figuring out what the password actually is. So now we can check if everything went according to plan. So if ID is not negative one, that means that the user was created. Otherwise, there was some kind of weird issue that we should hopefully never come across. So our success code is zero. We'll go ahead and also make error codes for all of these other errors down here. This will be six, seven, and eight. And with that, I think we are done with our PHP. We can go ahead and try it out. And of course, nothing works first try, so we're going to have to go fix this missing semicolon on line 9. Or sorry, line 8 here. Try that again. We have another issue here. And what I've actually done here is I've actually forgotten to put the exclamation point before the preg match. So let's go ahead and add that. Now when we try this again, we are getting an invalid password error. So reading this data out of the console, is not that great, 
we want to actually show this to the user in a human readable form. So to do that, we're going to convert the result, which is a string, into a JavaScript array using json.parse. And put this whole thing in a try catch block in case something goes wrong. And we also want to check if this is actually an array. And what we'll do here is we'll actually just throw an exception if it isn't an array. And we'll create a catch statement down here just to, to catch any exceptions. And then what we can do now is we can loop through all of our errors and we will show them to you to the user in a nice way. I'm going to skip this part because it's all just HTML and CSS type of stuff. Basically, I'm just going to be adding in some nice human readable text depending on the error. So we have just a switch statement here with all of the error codes in them, along with some nice effects where the error will actually kind of flash when it shows up. That way you can tell every time you press the submit button that something has happened. So if we go ahead and try this, you can see all of our errors. We have invalid name, invalid email, etc. So if we put in a valid name, that goes away. If we use numbers, that's invalid, so it'll tell us. We can also go ahead and put in an invalid email. We can try out our actual email here, and that works fine. If we put in a domain that does not exist, it will know that and let you know. And then for the password, of course, it has to fit our, our rules here. So let's put in a valid password. But now our passwords don't match. So let's go ahead and make sure that they match. And once we click sign up, we have create an account. It says, please verif validate your email here. We will be doing that next episode. So stick around for that. And as you can see, we have added a new row to our database. So just to show you guys here, if I try to make an account with the exact same email of an account that already exists, we will also get an error. So thank you guys for watching. Please stick around for more episodes in this series where we talk about how to make things super, super secure against any kind of web attack you might find. So if you enjoyed this video, please stick around for the coming episodes because it's very important for the security of the whole system that you follow all of these steps that we're going to be talking about. This was just the registration, but soon we'll tackle some other things that will make this more secure along with other features such as logging in, resetting your password, and validating the email once you sign up. So thank you guys for watching. Please stick around. There's a lot more to come. And of course, if you have anything to say, let us know in the comments below. We always appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much.